Bible Believers Fellowship and KJVBibleBelievers.com extend our best wishes for the coming year in 2013 as we look for the rapture at any moment while beginning another year of radio ministry. Bible Believers Fellowship will continue to be heard Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM. Bible Believers Fellowship presents a verse-by-verse study of the book of Revelation, available free to view on streaming video or download in MP3 audio by simply visiting kjvbiblebelievers.com. Download these free expository studies of the book of Revelation and share them with others by putting them on flash drives, burning CDs or DVDs, or simply post links to our messages in email or on your own Facebook or other social media site. Just visit kjvbiblebelievers.com, look under videos in the menu to the right of the page, and click on the book of Revelation link where you will find hours of free Bible studies and streaming video, and eventually you will be able to access our study of the entire book of Revelation. If you prefer MP3 audio, click on the MP3 audio page link at the very top of our webpage and use the search to pull up our book of Revelation studies. All are provided free of charge thanks to the free will offerings and support of the Bible Believers Fellowship family and kjvbiblebelievers.com. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and part two of our two-part study of Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through 14 titled Signs in the Skies. This study includes video clips and although the audio study is descriptive we would encourage those who are able to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com and watch the streaming video version of this message. And while there, you can also find our verse-by-verse study of the entire book of Revelation as we add messages each week until we finally have an exhaustive and thorough study of the entire book along with relevant topical messages on the book of Revelation. That website again is kjvbiblebelievers.com. And now we join our study in progress, part two of two, Signs in the Sky. Amazing to see. Well, you know, that is a taste of what we're talking about here. That is a taste, but it'll be things that we don't know about. These will be things that we don't realize. Uh, Isaiah 13 describes this. Um, Isaiah 13, 9 and 10, he says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Now you need to learn that phrase, the day of the Lord, that specifically is talking about the wrath of God poured out, but it also includes the kingdom age. And the kingdom age ends with one last judgment of the day of the Lord. But the day of the Lord, most of the time when you're reading about it, it's talking about the the, uh, great tribulation period. And Isaiah says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Listen, there are songs, sermons, books, all kinds of things where they talk about the day of the Lord like it's some awesome thing. Oh, I can't wait for the day of the Lord. (laughs) You have no idea what you're talking about. You better not be here for that. Amen? Amen? We want to be raptured, and it's not just that we want to be. The Bible says God's not going to pour His wrath out on us. We have not been appointed to wrath. Thank God for it. Because the more you read about the day of the Lord, you find out you don't want to be here for it. He continues in verse 10 and describes it. He says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Don't let anybody talk you out of believing that. Most teachers today will try to tell you, well, that's figurative. Oh, it's just going to be really cloudy. (laughs) You're just not not going to see. It doesn't say it's going to be blocked from view. It says that they won't give out their light. Something big is going to happen. Amen? It says, the sun shall be darkened in His going forth. See, it's not the clouds in our atmosphere. It says it's in His going forth. Saying it's the sun itself is going to be darkened. The moon shall not cause her light to shine. Of course, we know the the moon shines from the sun. 
And that is exactly what's going to happen. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. You remember Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, and there should be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. I want to show you this. These are the kind of things that uh, you see every once in a while. And, uh, it's very bright. That's a cop just sitting out in the, in the, doing his thing one night, and that's what he looks up in the sky and sees. Nice flashes. Oh, wow. Well. Now imagine sitting there eating your donut in your cop car. <laughs> and that's what you see. I think that goes poof at some point. No, nope, then. See, that was the thing. That was the one where they said, you know, the thing about that was it looked like a meteor and everything, but that little one little thing just kept going and wasn't burning up. Now, what is that? I'm not saying it's happened right now, but I know it's going to happen. Jesus said he saw Satan fall like lightning. And he is going to, with his tail, during the tribulation in Revelation 12, we'll see, bring a third of the stars of heaven in the context as angels to earth with him. And the world is going to think it's an alien invasion. And we've, we have a message on audio. It's, I don't know, 30,000 some downloads of that thing where we teach that. And we'll have to do it again sometime, get it on video. Is yeah. that also... There's something in Revelation that talks about wormwood. Is that the same thing? As wormwood? That's one of the things. I mean, there's several specific references to something coming out of the sky, looks like a meteor or that's, something. That's separate from Satan falling from heaven. Yeah, when it says Satan, it's Satan. When it says the dragon, it's Satan. When it says wormwood, that's, that's something else. I now, I mean, it could be a fallen angel named wormwood, but the effects of this seem to be something other than that because it makes the waters bitter and all that. But it, and it never speaks of wormwood like it does the dragon. It never speaks of wormwood in, as a, in, a, in, a, in an, an animate manner as though it's living. See? So that's why I, I don't teach that it is an angel. I can't say I know for sure it's not. But in uh, Isaiah 30, if you turn to Isaiah 13, turn over a few pages to Isaiah 30. And again, this is something that people try to talk you out of. <laughs> but um, Isaiah chapter 30, and beginning in verse 26, it says, More, Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. You go, wait a minute. What? <laughs> I mean, at some point, the moon's not going to shine at all. And remember, this isn't always in chronological order, and, it, and we don't have time to get into all the context, but this happens sometime before the sun is darkened and the moon is dark. Before that, this happens, and the moon shall be as the light of the sun. Why? Well, the rest of it says, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. So the sun will burn with heat and light seven times stronger than it does now. And the moon, because of that, will burn like the sun. And do you remember there's a point in the book of Revelation where it talks about men being scorched with heat. Mm -hmm. It goes on to say, in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of His people. That's the point of the tribulation period. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. When they're in Petra. In Petra, that's right. Protected probably by about the only thing that can protect you is a bunch of uh, thick stone. Right. And it says, Healeth the stroke of their wound. Verse 27, Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far, burning with His anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and His tongue as a devouring fire. The little baby Jesus isn't coming as a baby next time, is He? 
There's all this stuff about the little baby Jesus today. Isn't that something? Everybody wants... It's like that... I didn't watch the movie because I heard it was pretty raunchy, but that Talladega Nights where that uh, Will Ferrell is praying and he says, I like to pray to the baby Jesus. And they said, you know, well, he grew up. He's not a baby anymore. And Well, that's the way a lot of people are. They don't want the grown-up Jesus. I like to say what they've tried to do is turn Jesus into this hippie fruitcake. And the hippie fruitcake Jesus that you see in today isn't the biblical Jesus. The Jesus that doesn't judge, the, de the Jesus who would not condemn is not the biblical Jesus. He stands today, well, he's sitting at the right hand of God, but I think he's about to stand. <laughs> and when he stands, it's to go forth and bring us back with him. And then he pours out his wrath. This is the wrath of the Lamb, folks. I talked about that in a couple messages already on this, but the Lamb is not just, the, oh, the Lamb had died for the sins of the world. Yeah, and that Lamb is going to pour out wrath. And at the end of that seven-year period, he's going to kill about a billion people. Amen. That's that friendly, fluffy little Jesus that no one ever wants to think would ever do anything to hurt anybody. Listen, He wouldn't do anything to hurt any of His children. But if you're not His child, you're His enemy. Amen. Now that's what you won't hear preached today, but that's what God's Word says. You're either one of His children or you're of your father the devil. And if you're of your father the devil, then you are an enemy no less than the devil himself. Amen. And that's what this is about. And that's why he is full of indignation. His tongue... Hey, listen, if you don't love this Jesus, you don't love Jesus. Amen. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You better fall in love with the real Jesus. There's only one. You don't get to you know, pick and choose. It's not multiple choice. He's not Mr. Potato Head where you can put the parts on you like... You either take Him as He is or you don't take Him as all, at all. Amen? Amen? And that's what people are trying to do today. Now, Brother Noah uh, said this. He said, We read in Isaiah 13.10 that in the day of the Lord the sun will become dark and the moon likewise. But in Isaiah 30.26 we read that the sun will become seven times hotter and the light from the moon is the light of the sun, as I mentioned. He says the same solar and lunar phenomena in the tribulation is declared in the second chapter of Joel. I want to mention this because this is what happens. My notes are finished. And I pick up Noah's book and that's what he says. Bible believers, we don't need a denomination, we don't need a head, we don't need a pope, we've got the Holy Ghost, He teaches us the same book and we all land on the same page when we rightly divide it and we believe it. Yes. My notes are finished. Everything you already heard me say, and I picked that up, and he said the same thing. He says, Jesus said that uh, the close, typo, of the tribulation, the sun would become dark and the moon would not give light. We read also under the trumpet and bowl judgments in Revelation that the sun will become hot, then dark, and the light from the moon will be as blood. Now, Jesus said this in Luke 21, 11, Fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Listen, I'm just telling you, turn off the boob tube. There is too much going on today to be wasting your time with television. I mean, I watch television, but I don't watch cable TV. I don't watch the network garbage. What I watch is this happening before our eyes. And most people are walking around like zombies. They have no idea what's going on today. You talk to them about this stuff. Have you seen what's going on with the sun in the last six months? Mm -hmm. The sun has been popping. And there's been warnings coming out from totally secularist, non-Christian scientists warning that there's something going on with the sun. <clears throat> They're warning people about, you think an EMP bomb from Ahmadinejad in Iran would knock things out. You get a nice buzz from the sun, that's you'd knock you back into the 19th century. That's right. And that's what they're warning about. Now, oh, I want to show you this before we get to this other quote. This 
is what we're going to see described in just a minute. But the sun, according to what we're reading in the Scriptures, it's going to burn seven times brighter, which is going to cause the moon... What? You can't see? My big head in the way? And isn't that the, kind of wrong? I mean, isn't it supposed to be the earth standing still and everything else revolving around the earth? That's another issue. I'm not going to get the <laughs> geocentrist thing. Um, but when it grows seven times larger, or I'm not even saying it's growing seven times, just burning seven times brighter, the moon is going to burn like the sun. Now, that then would tend to lead you to believe that it's what we call a nova. Right. Which would lead you to where Peter goes when he says that the elements will burn or melt with fervent heat. Now, that's going to... That's, it may sound complicated. You're saying, well, that means everything's going to be destroyed. No. At that point is when Jesus Christ has entered into this world again and everything becomes spirit. Yes. And so everything that's not spirit melts. And we enter a new era. Okay? We'll talk more about that. Noah continues. He says, well, what, what does this mean? By checking an astronomy textbook, the reader will find that when a small or average sized star novas, it becomes hot and bright for a period of 7 to 14 days. Our sun is an average sized star. The atoms are then stripped of their shells and the entire mass collapses into a ball from thousands of miles in diameter to less than 15 miles in diameter. The gravity becomes so intense that even light cannot escape. The moon reflects the light of the sun, and if the sun becomes seven times hotter, the light from the moon will become as the light of the sun. If the sun becomes dark, then of course the moon will become dark. He's describing the process of a nova. And you say, well, wh 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 this happens before the end of the tribulation. Wouldn't everything just freeze and we'd go into, you know, uh, suspended animation? Well, here's the thing to remember. There was light before the sun. That's right. Amen. Did, did you ever pay attention to that in the book of Genesis? Uh -huh. Go back to Genesis chapter 1. Yeah. There was light on day 1. The sun wasn't created until verse 14 through 19. So what was there between the first and the third day if the sun wasn't there? God. God. <laughs> and He can make light wherever He wants to. The sun, I believe, is going to basically uh, mimic what we saw in Genesis 1. The sun is going to disappear in a nova, uh, more than likely, something comparable to that. And there's going to be this condition of the world that right now, you want to feel like Noah... <laughs> Anybody today, you want to feel like Noah? Go on, come out this week and tell people you believe this. Oh, yeah. And they'll look at you just like they did Noah. Rain. Right. What is rain, Noah? Water comes up from the earth. <laughs> Noah's so stupid. Yeah, they thought so that day that the rain started, didn't they? See what I'm saying? You want to be, you want to, everybody says, oh, Noah, I love that guy. I'd love to be just like Noah. Well, there's a chance. <laughs> Go tell everybody you believe this. Sun's going to disappear, but the earth is going to still continue on just uh, in a mess, but it'll still continue on. But here's what Noah closes with. He says, There are more than 30 novas of stars in our Milky Way galaxy occurring annually. It is evident from the prophetic word that in the tribulation our sun will nova. Else how could the prophets two or three thousand years ago describe this solar occurrence so accurately? What happens after that solar event is God's business. So let, a, uh, let us let Him take care of that. That's what I'm saying about Genesis 1. There's coming a time when there's going to be no sun. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? So verse 13, read that with me. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, there is a place, I said in Revelation 12, where a third of the stars fall with the dragon. That is clearly talking about angels. We'll see that in Revelation 12. This doesn't say a third, and it's not talking, it's talking in physical terms. The sun, the moon, the stars. 
the stars will fall. It says the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Now, um, pay attention closely to the words of your King James Bible. It says they fell unto, not onto the earth. In other words, if one star fell to the earth, it would burn everything up. Correct. But it doesn't say it fell on the earth. It says it fell unto the earth. Just like when someone is, uh, sees Jesus and they fall under the, uh, unto Jesus by falling flat to the ground. They kneel unto Jesus. They fall flat unto Jesus, but they don't fall on top of Him. Uh -huh. That's the same thing with these stars. They fall unto the earth. Now, think of this. <coughs> think of the... You, remember, you go back to the story of Egypt. Every one of those plagues was striking an Egyptian god, small g. Mm -hmm. God, big G, was proving His sovereignty over all the little gods okay, in Egypt. Yeah. Well, the same thing, that's what this is about. If you look today, all major religions, including the Vatican, go look it up. They spend tens of millions of dollars a year studying the stars, but also secretly involved in astrology and the horoscopes and all the witchcraft of the stargazers, the Vatican. New Age movement. Mormons are one of the biggest consumers of astrology in this country. Satanism, the occult, Freemasonry, Eastern mystic religions, the Hindus, Buddhists, uh, all that Zen and all that uh, Confucianism Taoism. and uh, Taoism and, the, and all that ancestral worship and animism, all that animism, animism, is what was it? Animism. Mm -hmm. Islam, believe it or not, they are very occultic and very astrological. They all look to the stars. Hey folks, and I'll include most professing Christians today. Get on your Facebook and see how many of your friends have their daily horoscope. How many of them get their astrological sign? How many of them have in their, you know, well I'm a Virgo and I, you know. They if they're not saved, they're left behind. Amen. And they're left with all these other star-looking people. God's going to take care of those stars. You know who else looks? Atheists, agnostics, humanists, and skeptics. Can you say NASA? Mm -hmm. Everything they do today is looking to the stars for hope of finding evidence there is no God. This little thing here is a diagram supposed to be showing how the Big Bang took place and what and it's you know that's what they're looking they, they study the stars and the, what they call red shift dark matter you know dark energy what are they doing on Mars right now looking for evidence of life every news report from the Mars rover is oh, we might have found life water Ooh, look at that. It looks like there was water here once. That means there could have been life. And you think, well, what? you know, the reason is because hey, if they can find life on Mars, they could do a dance. You know, hey, yeah. Life evolved on Mars just like it did on Earth. The evolution rules. You know, that's what they're after. And that's why God's going to take care of them stars. Amen. He's going to steal their hope. Whether their hope is looking for the, to the stars for proof there's no God, or they look to the stars for answers, God's going to take it away. The stars are going to fall unto everyone on the earth. You're just going to watch them fall. Scientifically, unexplainable, but if you believe the universe has a top and a bottom, and I believe it does, I believe God gave us a north star because He's telling us which way's up. And I think all those stars are going south when they go. And that's why it says then in verse 14, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now that I say here is really beyond our understanding to think of the heaven you know rolling back. Here's a picture I think. Yeah, here's an illustration kind of you know and you, you see that. And it, you know, a scroll rolls back like that. 
And so that's probably um, a good, as good as uh, a, an example. But look what, I love the, the picture because if you look, look what's happening. Meteors, signs in the sky, stars falling, sun's dark and the moon's blood, cracks and crevices, rip, earthquakes ripping everything up. Now, it, that doesn't, I hope, doesn't leave you with a sense of despair <laughs> because the point of this is to tell you you're saved Amen. from this. Amen. You're not just saved from hell, which is enough. <laughs> God saved you from this. And it is to motivate you. Folks, we've got friends and family that if the rapture happened right now, they're in it. It's to motivate you to witness to people, to share the gospel, to pray for the lost. I'm glad to say I don't really feel like I, I'm, you know, having to preach to a bunch of deadbeats. You know, I believe I'm in a room full of people who love lost souls. But I think all of us need reminded, because I do, I need reminded. This is urgent. We need to be busy. We need to be praying for lost souls. We need to be uh, handing out those little Scripture cards, tracks, or whatever else you can do to get the Gospel out. Talking with people. I don't care, you know, it can be internet, it can be on your Facebook page, it can be your bumper of your automobile, if you're allowed to put bumper stickers on there. You know, uh, doesn't matter where. If you are sharing the Gospel with people, that's what you're supposed to do. That's it. And of course, we live it in a way that we don't turn people off. We live in a way that people see that it's real to us. We're not just talking. Jesus is real. And I want to encourage you uh, to live it in a very real way. Uh, through your day, pray. Pray without ceasing. Talk to the Lord during your day. Read His Word. Meditate on it. Get a Bible verse and Especially if you're one of these guys that's so busy you can't do anything else, you know, but you can get a memory verse and it's like every few minutes quote it in your head. By word have I hid in my heart that I might have sin against thee. You know, just be uh, in that relationship, building your faith in the Word of God. Amen. Be sure to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find a wealth of MP3 audio message downloads along with additional videos, articles, and links. This message is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Greg Miller. Thank you for listening. One Bible comes from the manuscripts given to us without error from God Almighty, the Masoretic Hebrew Old Testament and Textus Receptus Greek New Testament. One Bible is authorized by the word of a king, published in 1611. One Bible has been declared anathema by Rome and the Pope, and its readers burned at the stake for owning it. One Bible is hated by false religions, cults, and apostates from Rome to the United Nations. And one Bible stands as God's great weapon for an end-time remnant.
the authorized King James Bible of 1611, the only Bible ever used by Bible Believers Fellowship. We use it because we believe it.